Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hi. Today we're watching the 1983 film called War Games and this has come about because you guys suggested it to us and quite a few of you suggested this to us. So we thought, hmm, have we both seen it? No. Do we know anything about it? No. And I know a little bit about it only, but never seen it. So we looked at the trailer and it looked pretty cool. What did you think of it? The trailer made the film look quite old. The computers, they looked outdated. The film did look like it was made a while ago, but it still looks good. The story looks like it has something to do with a computer. We see Ferris Bueller. So yeah, it's this Matthew Broderick like a couple of years before Ferris Bueller and we really liked him when we did a, re a reaction video to Ferris Bueller. So a lot of boxes were ticked with this choice. So thank you for, for suggesting it. From what we can tell from the trailer, it's also nuclear war based, which is kind of interesting. In 1983, very cold war period between uh, Russia or the Soviet Union and America. So it was very much on people's consciousness. And we skip to modern day today is there still relevance with it. So it'd be nice to have a look at the sort of what take the film has with it, what it discusses. And with computer hacking, there are accusations of other countries trying to destabilize countries via computers. Maybe what War Games has to offer is still relevant, but that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. It was directed by John Badham. Uh, and I know John Badham from uh, Saturday Night Fever. So he's a solid filmmaker. So hopefully this will be a solid film too. And we've also got Ali Sheedy, of course, who's part of the, uh, the Brat Pack. Do you want to have a look at the DVD? Yeah. There you go. This looks, yeah, definitely computer based. Hmm. Uh, one thing I couldn't tell from the trailer is the tone. Uh, is this thriller? Is this comedy? Is this teenager film? Is it a coming of age film? Is it a family film? Is it a children's film? It could, I couldn't really get a strong sense of either of those from the trailer, so I'm looking forward to seeing what sort of tone this film is as well. All right, let's go back in time to old computer interfaces and to 1983. Are you ready to go? Yeah. All right, thanks very much for watching, guys, and thank you for the suggestion. And please make more suggestions. We do read them uh, and keep up to date with us by putting a like on the video and subscribing and we'll catch up with you after the film for a review and summary. Until then, thanks very much. Replacement team's here, sir. It's cool. Another 20 minutes, we're gonna start looking for you guys. Yeah, it's really something up. You look a mess, sir. Yeah? You turn next, Ginsburg. This guy on the left, he's got one of those faces. I've seen him in loads of stuff. But I don't know his name. Okay, all right, I'll see you in 24. See you tomorrow. They had guns. Yeah. Primo stuff, residency. I wonder what the relevance of the guns was. You guys haven't been on time for the last six months. Well, I wrote you guys up in the logbook. Yeah, you're a prince. Only w anyone urinating in this area will be discharged. Okay. <laughs> so that was like sensimilia, right? Sensimilia. This grass made Thai stick taste like oregano. Oh, they changed their clothes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A missile group status board. Got a red light, sir. What up? Number eight, warhead alarm. Give a thump with your finger. US Air Force, so. Okay, they're in charge of the missiles, mm. the nukes. A dangerous job. They could accidentally, like, fire one. Yeah. This is Dropkick with a red dash alpha message in two parts. Break, break. 
Red Dash Alpha. Stand by to copy the message. Alpha. Tango, Tango, Lima, Alpha. Authentication. Two, two, zero, zero. Looks like Michael Madsen. Blood message. Stand by to authenticate. I agree with authentication also, sir. Entering launch code. Did they get it wrong? Oh. No, it's verification. Launch order confirmed. Wait, are they launching the yeah. nukes? Begin countdown. T minus 60. All right, let's do it. Insert launch key. Stand by. Launch key inserted. Roger. Three. Two, one, mark. T minus 50. They're going to fire a nuke. Yeah. It's certainly making us think that. Chan, all missiles enabled. Minus 30. Give me wing command post on your direct That's line. not the correct procedure, Captain. Sa that's not the correct procedure. Screw the procedure. I want somebody on the goddamn phone before I kill 20 million people. I got nothing here. They might have been knocked out already. Right. On my mark. 14. 13. 13 12. 12. Wow. What a responsibility. 7. 6. 5. Sir, we have a launch four. order. Three, Put your hand on the key, two, sir. One. Sir, we are at launch. Turn your key. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Turn your key, sir. Oh, it's gonna shoot. What? Whoa. Why did it have to turn the key? It needs two of them to verify with each other, rather than just one person who could uh, go crazy, and one person could go crazy and launch a missile, but if it's two of them, it makes that less possible. But would he have shot him? Why did he stop? I guess he didn't like the idea of sending a nuclear missile and being responsible for it. So I guess strict procedure, if there is a nuclear attack to, in the military, it's like you have to be decisive very quickly and, and effectively to make sure that the, a retaliatory missile is, is sent or, or any kind of situation where a missile is sent, that's the military's way of making sure it gets sent. It's a proper bunker. I want to go back to the nuke people, I want to see what happened. So if you don't turn the key, is the nuke doesn't launch? I guess so. But then, would he have shot him? Or was he just not following orders? They're here. Good. Let's go. Well, look, now are we positive that these men had no way of knowing this was only a test? Okay. Okay. I'm the one that has to explain to the president why 22% of his missile commanders failed to launch their missiles. 22% didn't fire the missile. Besides, you can't screen out human response. Those men in the silos know what it means to turn the keys, and some of them are just not up to it. Right, right. It's a hell of a responsibility. I think we ought to take the man out of the loop. Mr. McKittrick, you're out of line, sir. Why am I out of Wait line? Wait a minute. We've had men in these silos since before any of you were watching Howdy Doody. 
For myself, I sleep pretty well at night, knowing those boys are down there. But in a nuclear war, we can't afford to have our missiles lying dormant in those silos because those men refuse to turn the keys. Probably follow the computer war plan. Now, that's a fact. Oh, well, I imagine the uh, Joint Chiefs will have some input. You damn too. The Soviets launch a surprise attack. There's no time. 23 minutes from warning to impact. Six minutes if it's sub-launched. There's barely enough time for the president to make a decision. Now, once he makes that decision, the computer should take over. Hmm. So... There were more people firing the nukes at different areas. Yeah, this is just one. The Whopper spends all its time thinking about World War III. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it plays an endless series of war games. It estimates Soviet responses to our responses to their responses and so on. So what you're telling me is that all this trillion dollar hardware is really at the mercy of those men with the little brass keys. That's exactly right. Whose only problem is that they're human beings. I wouldn't trust this overgrown pile of microchips any further than I could throw it. And I don't know if you want to trust the safety of our country to some uh, silicone diode. <laughs> I think I'm going to recommend McKittrick's idea to the president. And I'll get back to you on this. This is pretty interesting concepts already to discuss whether or not a human being should intervene with a computer decision whether to fire a nuclear weapon. For back then. It's Ferris. <laughs> Ferris. <laughs> He's having a day off. <laughs> mm. this, arcade machine. this was the way to play computer games before they came in even into the home mm. I remember going to arcade centers like that it's where all the gaming fanatics went oh David nice of you to join us oh David I have a little present for you oh <laughs> Who first suggested the idea of reproduction without sex? <laughs> Miss Mack! Yes. What is so amusing? <laughs> it's gonna be... Um... Maybe you could tell us who first suggested the idea of reproduction without sex. Um... Your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Pencil. Is that a password or something? Oh, nice car. Who's going to say no? Huh? Is that how motorbikes used to be? I mean, I guess so. I mean, I guess there was a time when helmets were brought in to be compulsory. How are you doing? Ah, 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 ah. Hi, Bo. Hey, Bo. Oh, hi, Bo. Hey, Bo. It's a golden retriever. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> You're really into computers, huh? Yeah. Floppy disk. What are you doing? Dialing into the school's computer. Pencil? Yeah. They change the password every couple of weeks, but I know where they write it down. He shouldn't put his name in, because then they're going to know who just hacked into their computer. Those are grades? Yeah. But he's just looking up I don't files. think that I deserved an F. Do you? <laughs> you can't 
do that. Already done. <laughs> do you have a middle initial? K, Catherine. What are you doing? I'm changing your biology grade. Change it back. Why? They can't possibly. I this. said change it back. It does the uh, the same sort of trick with uh, as, as Ferris, doesn't he? Mm. With his absent days. Thanks for the ride. Yeah. Okay. Mm, she didn't like that. They're replacing it with computer. Well, the computer could like turn evil. Could do, yeah. Start sending random missiles and destroying bases. Sure, I think we can really work out some creative financing. Protovision. All right. Five 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 eight six three two. Yeah. Protovision. It's going through the phone line. Is he going to try and get the game? Is he just going to go to sleep and leave it running? I don't know. I know that game. <laughs> Do you? Space Invaders. Oh. It's called Galaga. Can you still change it? Oh, I, I can't know. believe I was so stupid. I should have just let you do it. Oh, yeah, he left it. Mm -hmm. Does it have to reach, like... What's it doing? Um, 10,000. Just trying them all. Don't touch the keys. I'm not touching the keys. They answer with a tone that other computers can recognize. You calling every number in Sunnyvale? You can go to jail for that. Only if you're over 18. <laughs> Is this going to take a long time? I'd like to get my grade changed. I already changed it. I told you not to do that. Oh, no. Does she like that or not? Really give me an A. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. And I am. Where should we go? An airline company. Will you be traveling alone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you want to go? It doesn't identify itself. Connection terminated. How rude. Try password. <laughs> password one. Help games. games. Games refers to models, simulations, and games that you have tactical that must be and strategic them. application. List games. I wonder if these are real games. Oh, check it. Maybe some of these are real. Yeah, I think so. Oh my god. Uh, can you wait here? Why? Because these guys can get a little nervous. Around women? Because they're geeks? Around extra people. Hi, light men. I was trying to break into Protovision. I wanted to see the program for their new games. Hey, wait, Jim, I'm not through yet. Remember you told me to tell you when you were acting rudely and insensitively? Remember that? You're doing it right now. 
This didn't come from Protovision. Looks military to me. Definitely military. Probably classified, too. Yeah, but if it's military, why does it have games like Checkers and Backgammon? Maybe because those are games that teach basic strategy. Okay, you really want to get in, find out as much as you can about the guy who designed the system. The first game on the list. Go right through Falcon's Maze. Maybe he's right. Yeah. Uh, there'll be a solution or something within Falcon's Maze. Oh, he's looking at planes. Oh no. Nuclear. The role of bluffing in a nuclear standoff. How'd you get in or out of a maze? Um, going some... to the exit? Or the entrance? Yeah, it'd be something to do with. No, he's looking up Falcon. Hmm. He's not wearing any t-shirt. Yes, <laughs> it's true. Is David here? How do you do? Yeah, he's up in his room. And she just comes in. Hi. Mm. Where have you been? What? Mm hmm. This is a tape that I got from the library. It's about this guy named Falcon. He was into games as well as computers. All right. <laughs> Getting computers to play advanced games. He, he designed his computer so that it could learn from its own mistakes. Machine learning. Hmm. It could teach itself. If I could just get that damn password, I could play the computer. That's him. That's Falcon. Wow. He's amazing looking. He's dead? Yeah. Here, look. Here's his obituary. I recognize him. This is really sad. Did you know the child and his mother were killed in a car crash? Yeah. What was his name? The name of the boy. No, Falcon's kid. Joshua. Wow. Wow, he's in. It's hilarious. I've used your name as passwords in the past. We're in. It thinks I'm Falcon. You want to hear a talk? Yeah. I'll ask it how it feels. Excellent. It's been a long time. Can you explain the removal of your user account? Shall we play a game? Oh. Opal thermal nuclear war. Fine. Oh no. Phew, straight in there. Which side do you want? I'll be the Russians. <laughs> Easiest primary targets. <laughs> Las Vegas, great. Is it gonna actually nuke or something? No, no, it's just a game. But like it's a strategy game. Kill us. I think it's gonna actually nuke it. I have seven. Correction, eight. That's eight red birds, two degrees past. Wow. It is that it's nuclear. It's actually He's into the main computer. But he can't win. Well, does that mean it's actually gonna nuke Russia? Uh, sir, we have a radar tracking. Eight inbound Soviet ICBMs. Already over the pole, estimated impact, eleven minutes. Confirmed target area, Western United States. <laughs> what is all that stuff? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> their trajectory headings for multiple impact re-entry vehicles. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's great. <laughs> The president's in his limousine, they're diverting to Andrews, the vice president is out of position. Zach, this is Crystal Palace. Sink Norad has declared DEFCON 3. Scramble all alert aircraft. Wait, they might accidentally start a war with Russia, yeah. like, properly. Exactly. Zach is launching the bombers, General Powers is on the line. This could escalate, escalate really quickly. Get the ICBMs in the bullpen warmed up, ready to fly. Mr. President, this is Barringer at Norad. Oh, oh, attack! Mm. <laughs> I wonder if I should use my subs. <laughs> You'll come down now. I want Honey, this cleared up right you away. Come down here and do what your well, father you asked you to. Hmm. Is she gonna play the game? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Flirty. I think she's gonna play it. Oh look, he's just turned off everything. He just turned off the... Yeah. What the hell's he yelling about? I didn't order any simulation. We're not being attacked! It's a simulation! Whoa now, hold it! You're not supposed to be running here. Somebody can get hurt. <laughs> Somebody's playing a game with us. You have just passed all of your classes this semester. <laughs> you cheated. Yeah, yeah. For three and a half minutes last I'm night, so the proud defense of forces you. of the United States went on a full-scale well, nuclear alert. Oh, believing that the Soviet Union had this? launched a surprise missile right. attack. There you go, buddy, you know. <laughs> Seriously, David, congratulations. And now what was he going to do then? Hello? Are you watching the news? Uh -huh. Jennifer, yeah. I'm sure they didn't trace the call. And listen, all you have to do is act normal, okay? That's so much printing was done. Greetings, Professor Falcon. I am not Vulcan. Vulcan is mm. dead. Sorry to hear that, Professor. Yesterday's aim was interrupted, although primary goal has not yet been achieved. What is the primary goal? To win the game? To win the game. computer wants to keep playing the game but it is still playing the game because he's dis he's only disconnected himself from that com the main computer so the computer is still playing the game oh hello is he being followed oh no they're like the agents from uh, Matrix. <laughs> Everyone's following him. Yeah, yeah. David Lightman, hold it right there, please, FBI. How did they find them? I don't, they're the government, so they have their ways, I guess. Wait, it's about human. This is about robots being smarter than humans. But I bet it's going to be in the end. Um. He's going to have to beat the robot. The one in the middle. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, maybe. Oh, my God, that's the wrong one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's a joke. Mm. You didn't blow up anything. Well, look what you did do. <laughs> Is he old enough without his parents? Mr. Cabot, it was a one in a million shot. There was an open line at our space division in Sunnyvale. Well, it looks like we've got a high school prank on our hands. Here, there's no way that a high school punk can put a dime in a telephone and break into our system. He's intelligent, but an underachiever, 
alienated from his parents, has few friends. A classic case for recruitment by the Soviets. <laughs> Says the guy who looks a bit like Putin. Oh, yeah. No, sir, he says he does this sort of thing for fun. What? Damn it, John, I want some answers, and I want them now. Hello, David. John McKittrick. I run the computer facility here. I tell you what, uh, Sergeant, would you tell the OD I'm going to take David for a little walk? Does he understand that he, it's quite innocent from David, I wonder? Joshua. See that sign up here? Up here? Yeah. DEFCON? Still on a four because of that little stunt you pulled. Actually, if we hadn't caught it in time, it might have gone to DEFCON one. Yeah, it was minutes away, wasn't it? No, what does that mean? World War Three. You say you broke into our system just to just to play a game, right? That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> I didn't do it again. I even threw the number away. Yeah, they found it in the trash, you know. Joshua called me. David, uh, machines don't call people. You're dead. Now, you had reservations for two to Paris. Oh, it doesn't make him look good at all. Who are you working oh, with? Oh, no. Nobody. Why don't I believe you? I don't think I should say anything else until I talk to a lawyer. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to answer the phone? We spoke a lot about you know, chess and poker for bluffing. Are they doing bluffing now? All right, I'll be right down. He's going to do something. There's no cause for alarm. The system won't accept the launch code unless we're DEFCON 1. Well, who did this? I think the kid's got to be working with somebody on the outside. Is the machine Joshua doing it? Oh, no. Oh, no, don't, mate. <laughs> You're in enough trouble. <laughs> Joshua. Greetings, Professor Hogan. Oh. Are you still playing a game? Of course. I should reach DEFCON 1 and launch my missiles in 28 hours. A game? Uh, or is it real? What's the difference? Oh, wow. Hmm. Could not find you in Seattle and no terminal is in operation at your classified address. Stephen W. Vulcan. Five tall cedar road, Goose Island, Oregon, nine. There's an address for Falcon. Get that little bastard out of the war room. No, it's Joshua. He's still playing the game. He's gonna start a war. Call Falcon. He'll tell you. Please call him. <laughs> what are those stuff? I don't know. Bandages, medical stuff. Hmm. Clever. And now you can open that. Mm -hmm. What's he gonna come up with? What's that? I don't know, is it a microphone? I have a right program. <laughs> Excuse me. What do you want? Bathroom. Please, let me talk to Mr. McKittrick. I gotta talk to him. Is he gonna hear what they're saying? Oh, <laughs> clever. <laughs> he's really making himself look like he's guilty he just wants to speak to right now I don't recognise anyone you back there comes Putin <laughs> oh 
How's he gonna get it if he gets into that room? He wants to speak to the scientist. Wait, folks. So we'll have to end the tour here. Oh, pretend. Pretend you're part of the tour. We'll have a complimentary beverage waiting for each one of you. Take care. Bye. Bye now. Twenty three hours. Basically got twenty a whole day. Yeah. What's he up to? Oh, he doesn't. Wait, what was he looking for in his pockets? A uh, coin, because you can use. You used to be able to use uh, public phones with uh, just a coin. He's hacking. Yeah. He's looking for one underground. Mm, okay. Metal contact. Lucky you found that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clever. I've never seen that before. Uh, Goose Island, Oregon, please. The number for Dr. Robert Hume. I find no listing. Falcon. Dr. Stephen Falcon. Right. I find no listing for Dr. Stephen Falcon. He died 10 years ago. His wife and child died in a car crash. So something's not right with that story. Listen, I'm in Colorado, and I need a really big favor. When you buy the ticket, will you tell them that I'll pick it up in, in Grand Junction Airport? The Soviets are denying any increase in their submarine deployment. They want to know what the hell we're doing provoking. If each side thinks the other is being provocative, it's going to escalate. Hmm. What are you doing here? Oh, you didn't sound too good on the phone. It was only a three-hour drive down here. You shouldn't have come here. I'm in real trouble. David, is this because of what you did with my grade? <laughs> Everyone needs an hey, ally with Ali. <laughs> what did they know about They don't know about Joshua. Falcon knows about Joshua. He's the only one who knows what it can do. That computer is trying to win the game that we asked it to play. I believe you. Hmm. How's this going to end? Mm -hmm. Falcon's, if he is alive, he's going to get involved, or is it Falcon's son? Hmm. One of them. It's going to help. What's that? Is that pterodactyl? Pterodactyl. It's like, actually, what is that? I think it's a model glider. Front uh, rudder oh. instead of a rear rudder? What was that? It's yeah, Falcon. it's Falcon. Did you see that? You know there are still they could fly. I tell you, the sky was once filled with them. Hmm. Hmm. Aren't you <laughs> Stephen Falcon? No. Follow path. Gate. Open gate through gate. Close gate. Wait, I came because of Joshua. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew some young hacker would come up to me one day and... That's Joshua hacking into Whopper. Radar reports two unknown tracks are penetrating the Alaskan air defense zone. 
scramble two F-16s out of Galena. Go to DEFCON 2. Ooh. Oh, no. DEFCON 2. That's why they needed people to fire nukes. Well, that, that was a question it asked at the beginning, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Makes you wonder what kind of safety measures they have in place these days. And I have negative radar contact. Repeat negative Soviet aircraft. 40 miles visibility. There's nothing out there, General. Just blue skies. He disappeared. Mm. You gonna call him up and tell him what Joshua's doing? Now, children, come on over here. I'm gonna tell you a bedtime story. There lived a magnificent race of animals. Quite recently, they disappeared. Quite recently, it was Nature like... Nature just gave up. Over 65 started again. billion Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means in the entire history of the planet, it's a bit... It's relatively recent. Nature knows when to give up, David. The whole point was to find a way to practice nuclear war without destroying ourselves. That I never could get Joshua to learn the most important lesson. What's that? Futility. That there's a time when you should just give up. Did you ever play tic-tac-toe? It's always a tie. Exactly. There's no way to win. The game itself is pointless. So you gave up? Decided to play dead? Extinction is part of the natural order. Well, shit! Man. If the real Joshua was still alive, your Joshua, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Look, we might gain a few years, perhaps time enough for you to have a son and watch him die. You don't care about death because you're already dead. Mm. Uh, that's his deal. I know a lot about you. I know you He's weren't crazy. always like this. What was the last thing you cared about? Yeah, exactly. You've missed the last ferry. He didn't answer the question. No. Come on, we'll find a boat. It's got to be a boat. What's he doing? He's having you rethink. Intelligence reports rumors of a new Soviet bomber with stealth capabilities. What happens if they just destroy that computer? Yeah, just or switch it off. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that, because they don't know. Well, they don't know it is the computer that's doing it. Oh. They think it's real, don't they, of course. What kind of an asshole lives on an island and he doesn't even have a boat? I wish I was like everybody else in the world. And tomorrow it would just be over. Hmm. It's really low down. Yeah, really low. Oh, look. It's all right. It's him. Uh, it's him with someone else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he is going to solve it. He could still be turning them in. Yeah. But I think at least he's got the will to. He's realised, hopefully, in in them that there's a there's something worth. You know, good for humanity. In what he saw in them was uh, got like nine something hours. that turned him round. Yeah. Confidence is high. I repeat, confidence is high. Cobra Day is this an exercise? Negative. This is not an exercise. Generally. Ooh, that was a nice move. Flush the bombers. Get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON One. DEFCON One. Where's the voice that's questioning whether or not it, it's real? Has he been in touch with the Premier? The Russians are still denying everything, sir. We have a Soviet submarine launch detection. Hmm. But the thing is, if they start launching... I mean... This is Crystal Palace. We're closing up the mountain. You'll have to hurry. After the gates are closed, nobody gets in or out. I mean, this is real 
how real escalation of war can happen when one fears that the other is going to do something, so that they do something to justify a preemptive strike. It's really um, hasn't changed much. Can flip it out. Oh my god. Just it's the driver. Yeah. <laughs> He's along for the ride. <laughs> Still. All units confirm weapons targeted and ready, awaiting launch codes. We are in a launch mode. Wow. Stop. How's it going? The president's about ready to order a counter strike. That's what we're recommending you do. It's a bluff, John. Call it off. No, it's not a bluff. It's real. Hmm. Uh, uh, General, what you see on these screens up here is a fantasy, a computer enhanced hallucination. Jack, there's nothing to indicate a simulation at all. But does it make any sense? Does what make any sense? That. Are you prepared to destroy the enemy? You betcha! Do you think they know that? I believe we've made that clear enough. Then don't. Hmm. <laughs> Do you really believe that the enemy would attack without provocation? So that we would have no choice but to totally annihilate them? General, you are listening to a machine. Do the world a favor and don't act like one. One minute and 20 seconds to impact. I mean, for in his world, that's one hell of a thing to comprehend. Yes, Mr. President. One minute and 10 seconds. Sir, at this point in time, we cannot positively confirm the inbounds. We have reason to believe they may not exist. I do, too. One minute to impact. Mm. Get me the senior controllers at each of those stations. I want to talk to them myself. Men, mm. we're mm. currently tracking mm. approximately 2,400 inbound Soviet warheads. <laughs> but at the moment, we cannot confirm this. Stay on this channel as long as you can. One, impact. Imagine it's real this whole time. Yeah. Anyone there? That's affirmative, sir. He was wrong. Mm -mm -mm. Someone's gonna accidentally press launch. Yeah, what's gonna happen? Sir, we got a problem. Whopper's not letting me log back on. They can't get in to stand on the missiles. Oh, he maybe he is good. What are those? Those are launch codes. 
Joshua's trying to find the right code so he can launch the missiles himself. The machine has locked us out. It's sending random numbers to the silos. He's gonna hit the codes to launch the missiles. Mm -hmm. Just unplug the goddamn thing. It would interpret a shutdown as the destruction of Norian. The computers in the silos would carry out their last instructions they'd lost. After very careful consideration, sir, I've come to the conclusion that your new defense system sucks. When he gets old 10, he'll launch the missiles. They've taken out my password. Joshua. I told you not to start playing games with that thing. You have to beat the game. Wants to play a game, then play it. Have it list games. God damn it, I'd piss on a spark plug if I thought it'd do any good. <laughs> list games. Chess. Oh, he has to beat it at chess. Yeah, maybe. Poker. Security system's not gonna let anything through. Four numbers. Global thermonuclear war. <laughs> Stephen, for Christ's sake, do something. Try no. again. Put the list back up. He's, he's being very quiet, is old Mr. Falcon. It's not on the list. Go ahead. It's got to be in there somewhere. Tick, tack, toe. <laughs> You're in. Put X in the center square. <laughs> 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 Up. There's no way you can win that game. Really I know that. It doesn't. It hasn't learned. Is there any way to make it play itself? Yes, number of players zero. You can... Part the loop. Destroying more and more power from the rest of the system. Oh, no. Ten, it's got the code. It's going to launch. It's being blown up. Yes, sir. Blown his circuits. Can't win. It's learning. Unless it learns away. It's trying all this, all the different strategies. Like uh, Iron Man. No, not Iron Man. Um, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Yeah. There's only one in a million, or whatever it was. Fourteen million. End game. Yeah. Sure. Strange game. The only winning move is not to play. <laughs> How about 
such a nice game of chess. I mean, he did start this as mm. well. Jeez. He's smart. Johnny, a John Bad. Bad kind of hit me right at the end there a bit. I think the overall concept of the film really made me think about wars and how sometimes there's no point since no one will win. It's an anti-nuclear war film. I suddenly realised what it was actually about. It's a really, really effective way of telling a story to conclude that there's no point in nuclear war. No one will win. Uh, I didn't see that coming, actually. Um, it, it was a really fun film, I think. The way he kept running away from the FBI and he kept escaping from all their trap or mm. prisons. Matthew Butterick was cool. Yeah. Ali Sheedy was great, but I, I was most, I was really impressed with how advanced it was actually, or or me not realizing how much I didn't know about computer yeah. hacking and how much you can go hack into a computer at that time. I mean, maybe maybe it's just my age. I was too young to sort of be interested in it, but. For 1983, it really deals with some proper computer stuff, some really serious sort of implications of it, how the uh, outside world, the, the, the authorities perceive hackers uh, who mostly are young and how they perceive them as a, like a terrorist threat. I hadn't seen that as early as 1983 at all. I didn't realize it was in this film. Wow, yeah, it was really enjoyable to watch. I mean, it felt fresh. That was a fresh storyline. It didn't feel like an old storyline. Yeah. That felt like uh, it could be set in modern day just as easily. And did you think it was old or new or could be both? Or I mean, because of the computers, you could see it was kind of old. If you changed the computers, I would think it would have been made maybe like yesterday or something. A modern take on it could be the election. <laughs> uh, someone hacks in uh, to change the election results of a country and we're not far from that in reality or certainly in perceived reality of people's fears but yeah the computer screens but I think that's okay I, did, I saw right past that yeah but what I really like is is it's just the, the heart of it the fundamental heart of it that if you set a computer a task to discover to, to find out a way how to win a nuclear war the answer it gives you is, it's best not to play. <laughs> That's cool. I really like that. It hit me a bit. Do you want to join a game of tic-tac-toe? Uh, thanks for suggesting the film. It was a really good film, to, to be honest. It really surprised me how good it was with all the computer hacking, with war and the plot twist where he decided to help. It was a really good film. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Thank you very much, guys, for, for suggesting that. You were spot on. It was good for the concept being, I think, still contemporary, but I really enjoyed looking at the nostalgia of it as well, like the uh, arcade, for example, and actually realising that the story is was way ahead of its time and it's perhaps even timeless, which makes it a really good a really good watch all in all. So, so thank you very much for suggesting that. Yeah, yeah, wow. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe the video. It really helps. And if you have any suggestions, please please write down below what you'd like us to see. Until the next time.